so good of you to come. A shame you won't be around long. Glad we're on the same page about your chance. Using his credentials to enter the Ames database. And we have located the clone on the top floor. Watch out. I think it might be expecting you. You never learn, masters. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osobrook501, and today I'm going to go over a ranged rocket build for Iron Man in Marvel's Avengers. And this build is able to put out some of the best sustained damage out of any builds or characters in the game. But this build is also super simple to play and super simple to build. There's not much complicated in this build. Now, since you can currently keep yourself supercharged for pretty much 100% of the time on Iron Man, whether that's a glitch or not, that makes this build incredibly easy to play and incredibly simple to play so essentially you're just going to keep yourself supercharged a hundred percent of the time and then you're just going to be spam shooting rockets at any enemies which will pretty quickly kill most enemies if you have decent gear even on the highest difficulty and past that you are just focusing on keeping yourself alive while doing that whether that be parrying or dodging attacks or staying behind your energy barrier before we get into our skills and our gear i want to go over two tips for Iron Man that can pretty much be used on any build are best used with a build like this. Now the first one is how you actually keep yourself supercharged 100% of the time as Iron Man. So you're going to be using the energy barrier ability which is you hold Q on PC. You can check whatever the buttons or keybinds on the console you're on by going over the tooltip. Once you create this energy barrier which is a floating shield you then spam whatever your parry ability is. You have to at least be hovering slightly off the ground for this to work and you just spam whatever your parry button or key bind is and this will essentially just spam actual parries it will for whatever reason consider the shield to be an enemy attack and it will let you spam parry against nothing which will very quickly increase your intrinsic energy which will then be able to overcharge yourself pretty much within one to two seconds from zero energy this will allow you to keep yourself supercharged pretty much a hundred percent of the time and never have to worry about having to go melee things or wait for your energy to come back. Now the second tip is that you can actually animation cancel your attacks. More specifically with rockets they have a lot longer animation than most of the other attacks at least for your range attacks on Iron Man and you can do this two ways. You can actually switch to a different one of your range attacks so you could just switch to your beam and then switch back. That that way is pretty slow to do it's kind of clunky and you can't really consistently do it the much easier way to do it and the way that you can actually spam out rockets pretty much fully automatically is you can animation cancel with spamming whatever keybind you have for emotes or whatever button you have for emotes now you have to be on the ground for this which makes it a little bit worse for survivability because you're not floating and you can get hit by melee attacks much more easily but essentially all you do is you shoot a rocket click whatever keybind or button you have set for an emote then you click a rocket pretty much as quick as you can right after clicking that emote button and you can start getting a rhythm with it if you do it too quick it won't actually work so you kind of have to get rhythm with it clicking your emote clicking your rocket fire and as you'll see in some of the footage you're able to pretty much spam out rockets incredibly quickly now with all that being said we can go into our skills so first we're going our support heroic ability we're using arc field which just sends out a bubble a big bubble around you when you use arc overload pretty much blocks all range attacks lets you shoot out of them at the same time so this helps a lot with survivability things can still walk in and melee you with your arc overload you're already knocking everything back usually you're going to be pretty safe here especially when you're using the animation cancel with emotes that makes you stay grounded then we're using defensive field with that that then can reflect projectiles back to target that can actually deal a decent amount of damage and just helps with killing things a little bit quicker these aren't super important if you don't have an issue with survivability you can use any of the talents or skill points in either of these rows they're not actually that important in fact a lot of these talents for your support heroic your assault heroic and your ultimate heroic are pretty much just what you like to use none of these are super integral to the actual power of this build now for our assault heroic ability i'm using omega beam now the reason i 
I use this is because it does a lot higher damage in a much quicker amount of time. Now the other beams you can keep going for a lot longer. Say if you were using Precision Refractor, you could keep Unibeam going for a lot longer, but I like the higher burst damage because we can get in, do a ton of damage with Omega Beam very quickly, and then go back to shooting our rockets. They're going to be doing a lot more damage than sitting in the longer versions of our Unibeam. And then I'm using Energy Condenser. If you defeat enemies with this ability, they will drop heroic orbs. Pretty nice to be able to get your heroics back. Your heroics for Iron Man are more utility based. I end up using Unibeam a lot of the time to block attacks and stop myself from dying. And then I end up using Arc Overload a lot as more of a utility to supercharge myself to make it go quicker. Or again, for defensive, that's why we have Arc Field. Most of these aren't used to do a ton of damage like most other characters kind of have. Now for our ultimate heroic ability, we're using Magno Missile Barrage. Now this lets your Magno Missiles target up to eight enemies. And what that ability is, is on PC it's three. And if you click this, it essentially just sends out a massive volley of rockets that track and hit enemies for a ton of damage. And this takes a ton of the overall energy for your Hawkbuster. If you don't know when you go in Hawkbuster, you have energy. Once you're out of energy, it takes out a Hawkbuster. The reason for this is this is super bursty damage. The Hawkbuster can't do as much damage as we can do just normally hitting things with rockets. Using that, getting as much damage as we can while getting out of our Hawkbuster quickly is pretty helpful. And also, I mainly use Hawkbuster to not die. That's essentially what it is because Hawkbuster will fully refill your health. And right when you click it, you're essentially immune to damage until you then get out of Hawkbuster. So that's pretty much my thoughts when going for these skills. Then using Energy Star reduces intrinsic energy costs by 25% for actions or attacks while using Hawkbuster. Now this helps you get multiple Magno Missile Barrages out. Now sometimes you can actually get three of these out, but most of the time not. Usually I would just use one barrage, then maybe melee some stuff a few times, and then use a second and you're out of your Hawkbuster. And that's essentially all the skills I use for these. Again, you can interchange most of these to whatever you like. I mainly use mine as utility or defensives, like I said. Now for our mastery skills, I'm going to try to go through these a bit quicker because most of them are pretty self-explanatory. So first, stun mastery increases stun damage by 15%. This just helps being able to take down enemies much quicker. Then we have takedown mastery, so it spawns a heroic orb every time you take down an enemy. That's super good on pretty much any character in the game. Range combat mastery increases range attack damage by 15%. Increase the damage you deal by all range attacks. Super, super good. For these three skill points, these are all based on whatever weapon type you're using. So we're using rockets, so you use all three of the bottom row. Increases damage, gives your rockets a guided rocket system, and reduces the energy cost of using them. Then we have arc reactor capacity. Reduces the maximum amount of intrinsic supercharged energy by 15%. Super nice just to have a bigger energy meter. Then we have overcharge duration boost. Increases the duration of the overcharge state by two seconds. Now this is super important because with what we just went over where you can keep yourself overcharged 100% of the time, being able to keep that longer increases your damage by a lot because anytime you come out of that, you're essentially just taking a few seconds to then re-overcharge yourself. So being able to keep yourself in it longer every time you do it increases the amount of damage you can put out by quite a bit. Then overcharge damage boost increases the damage while you're overcharged by 12.5%. This is super good because this is pretty much just another decent damage increase. Then reactive generator grants 15 intrinsic energy when pairing enemy attacks with energy possibility. Now the reason we're doing this is because what we went over with our energy barrier where we can spam our parry on it to get intrinsic energy back, this increases it and makes it go much faster. Then we're using tactical barrier, heroes near your energy barrier gain a 15% increased critical chance for all attacks. Like we just went over, we're using energy barrier to constantly overcharge yourself. So having us using energy barrier all the time, now we can have a 15% increased critical chance while we're near it. This is incredibly strong actually because 15% critical chance is a pretty massive buff and we'll pretty much have energy barrier up next to us almost 100% of the time because we're always using it to overcharge yourself and also staying behind this and playing around your energy barrier makes you much tankier because it blocks attacks. Then we're using afterburner which you can speed up your flight by using whatever you have the keep on set to its space normally on PC. Now this is also super strong on Iron Man because if you overcharge yourself 
itself, you can actually use this till your overcharge is done, like everything else. Pretty helpful for getting through missions much quicker, especially if you're doing some more specific farms. So with that being said, we can now go into our gear. Now, first off, Sacred Nornstone have Lethal Will. Now this build actually is pretty focused around damage buffs. So that is why we're using this. 6% increased critical chance when a damage boost is active, which is almost 100% of the time. Increase the duration of all damage buffs by four seconds and activatable damage boost. Now I don't think that activatable damage boost actually works right now. I'm pretty sure it still gives you the critical chance increase because it's a damage boost active, but it doesn't actually increase your damage. That's not that big of a deal because we will have a damage boost active almost 100% of the time. For our minor artifacts, we're mainly using these for the stats on them. Both of ours that we're using right now are all precision, which is just range damage increase essentially. And that's mainly what we're using it for. There's actually a ton of our range damage that we have for the entirety of the build. The gear perks aren't really used besides the damage reductions on them. There's not a lot of gear perks that work super well with this specific build. So it's mainly for the stats. If you feel like you need to be more tanky, just switch one of these out, one of the precision artifacts out with an artifact that has better rolled tanky stats or something with resolve or something with resilience. Now for our melee gear piece or our gauntlets, the main thing you want for your gauntlet is the armory flare perk, which is 122.5% increased critical attack damage from all weapons. I think that's a high second go and it might be able to get to 125%, but that's the main perk you want. Pretty much nothing else on this gear piece is really useful for our build. We don't melee, so the two other gear perks aren't really used. We pretty much only use proficiency out of the stats. And again, not having that well rolled of gear pieces just shows how great this build is. I do know there are some gear perks that can work with range builds on these gauntlets besides just the bottom one, but those seem to be pretty rare. So I definitely need to get one of those that has armory flare, has one of the other perks that still works with range attacks, and then has better stats on it. Next up, we have our range or our repulsor. This is pretty much the most important gear piece of this build. Now, because the first perk is the most important, you want the buff that has a, mine currently has a 58.4%. I think it goes up to 60% chance. Hitting an enemy with a range critical attack grants a damage buff. That's any range critical attack. And with missiles, you can hold your attack, which will then charge it up and let you target a bunch of enemies with, I think around 10 or 12 missiles. All of those hits and then explode and any of those crits can proc this. The stats on this are Valor Proficiency, so it's a pretty well-rolled piece. Those are two stats that are for ranged. It's a really well-rolled piece off that. We are using Gamma Damage for our missile attacks, and the reason I'm using that is because with this build, you don't have a way to really apply one element and then use another element just by yourself. Using something like, if I were to use this gear piece that has particle damage, or if I had a roll like this with particle damage, Damage, that may be slightly better, but the gamma damage over time can actually do a lot of damage. And I think it's based off percentage of the target's health, if I'm not mistaken. So you can actually do a ton of damage with applying gamma to a higher health target. Then for the last perk, chance of fending an enemy with a ranged critical attack grants a damage buff. You can definitely get a third perk that does something different and might even be better, but I thought this was a pretty good rolled gear piece in every other way, and that just guarantees we're pretty much always going to have a damage buff up. For our defensive gear piece, most of the stats on this aren't super good. The increased resistance to being suppressed is pretty good, but most of this other stuff, the chance when you're critically wounded to get an invulnerability buff is nice. The top perk, we don't really use that much. Mainly, I'm using this piece for the stats precision and proficiency, which are both our ranged perks. Now, if you need more survivability, get something that's much tankier. Like, I do have an exotic here that's all intensity and and resolve this would give me a defense rating increase of 22 percent so if you need to be more tanky just look for stats for something more tanky now this i think is my worst rolled gear piece this really doesn't have any stats on it or any perks on it that work super well for this build we do take down so getting a de defense buff almost half of the time when taking someone down is decent increase the recharge rate of our heroic support ability is nice we don't really do signature attacks i don't think any rockets or signature attacks and the perks on this aren't that great we do have Valor and Resolve, which help our survivability and damage a little bit. It's halfway decent on that, but this is easily my worst rolled gear piece. I just haven't gotten a gear piece with in the slot that has been super good. And this is effectively the best one I've been able to get for this specific build. And that's all the gear pieces, all the skill 
kills that I wanted to go over. You guys will see in the gameplay that this build is still incredibly strong, even with a few of these gear pieces being not that great of roles. But that is the entirety of the build. Subscribe if you want to see more Marvel's Avengers videos. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this build. And thanks for watching. Found with an elite guard team. You're gonna have to take them out before you can enter the facility. Hope these guys ever learn. You're about to have a very bad day. Every member of the elite team must be defeated. One of their agents is down. Well done. That squad member has been neutralized. Another enemy defeated. Leave it off! We're scanning the facility for the clone's location. In the meantime, I'm sending you to the lower floors to find a target who has more information. There is a chest with gear close by. There is a security chief up ahead who has the information for the facility. You know what to do. There they are. An impressive and educational performance. Excellent work. Using his credentials to enter the AIM database. And we have located the clone on the top floor. Watch out. So good of you to come. A shame you won't be around long. Glad we're on the same page about your chance. Using his credentials to enter the AIM database. And we have located the clone on the top floor. Watch out. I think it might be expected. You never learn, Masters. Every member of the elite team must be defeated. One of their agents is down. Well done, that squad man. We're scanning the facility for the clone's location. In the meantime, I'm sending you to the lower floors to find a target who has more information. Well done. That squad member has been neutralized. Look for a chest with gear nearby. There's a security chief up ahead who has the information for the facility. You know what to do. There they are. An impressive and educational performance. Excellent work.
Using his credentials to enter the AIM database. And we have located the clone on the top floor. Watch out. I think it might be expecting you. The Abomination clone is defeated. Well done, Avengers.